Hi, everybody. Welcome. Happy summer solstice to those of you in the Northern Hemisphere. Happy winter solstice to those of you in the Southern Hemisphere. We're still under a Mercury retrograde. So I would like to check whether you can hear me and see me and that we're live here together. The sun just gone into cancer and I'm loving what I'm seeing here in our chat. It's like a family feeling. Thank you, Lucy, for being here. April is here today. It's just so wonderful to come together, to be together. This is a really beautiful and strong solstice. And there are more portals and potentials open at these peak times. So this is why it's extra powerful. And I'm glad, yes, you can hear me. Welcome for us to create together at this time. Now we've got five planets in water signs, including the moon, which is ruler of cancer. So this is emotions. The focus is on the emotional body, what you're feeling, what you're sensing, what you're tuning into. And goodness gracious, there could well be lots of emotions coming up. I wouldn't be surprised, especially right now as we've got the moon in Scorpio. There's an intensity of the emotional body. I feel you to be my family. And I'd just like to take a moment here to somehow let's tune into one another. Yes, imagine, phantasme in Greek. I love that, phantasme. Let's fantasize. Let's imagine, because the water signs are all about imagination. They're all about activating the imaginative side of you. We had the equinox in March time, which was the Aries energy. Aries, the life force. Then we go into Taurus, the physical body. Then we go into Gemini, the lungs, the breathing, where you have to learn to breathe separately from your mother. We have to become independent beings. And now we have cancer. Cancer, the crown, who lives both on the land and in the water. So we've got the mixture here of coming out and feeling safe on land, but then needing to get back into the womb, into that watery place where you can float again, where you're not affected by gravity and heaviness and weight. Cancer, the energy of cancer has to do with family, with home. For me, I'm coming home when I'm with you. I hope you feel home here. So many of us, I feel, including me here, I include myself in this uh, journey, have never felt as though they've really belonged here. A deep sense of belonging. And now 
at this solstice, we've got an opportunity to work with the astral energies, the stars, the moon, the planets, and make our Earth a place where we can belong and feel that deep sense of nurturing, of safety, because cancer has a tendency to hoard things. Yeah, I'm cancer rising, I know. <laughs> I hoard food principally, like, oh, have I got enough water? And is there enough food? And what if it's not enough for everybody else? So what are you hoarding? What are you holding on to? And the energy now is to feel your way through, to feel what's going on, what's going on with you right now. What do you feel? What are you feeling right here, right now, as we come together? Because it really is about feelings, about imagination, about dreams, Venus is trying to Neptune. Oh my goodness, this is dreamland. What are you dreaming about? And we're working with moon energy. Always with Cancer, we're working with moon energy. And the moon is something that astrologers watch all the time because it's the fastest moving. Every two and a half days, it changes sign. So when the moon is in the water signs of Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces, chances are people feel more emotional, more tears, more emotions, more feelings are going on. And the moon is in Scorpio. So there's an intensity here, ooh, yeah. When the moon is in the fire signs, it's time to get on with things, take actions. When the moon's in earth signs, it's time to be practical. When it's in air signs, it's time to communicate more. And you will notice if you follow the moon that these nuances are present. I found myself just with tears streaming down my cheeks today, just as I looked at the sky and the water and the sun and the sea and the beauty. It was just, ah, emotional. So what's touching you right now? What are you feeling right now? How can you get more in touch with that intuitive voice? So we've got still this Capricornian energy. Yes, we've got a full moon in Capricorn coming up on the 24th. And Pluto in Capricorn, which we're all very well aware of. These authorities and structures and all of this change. So we're working with the energy of Saturn and the energy of Moon. And Saturn has to do with working hard. Saturn has to do with actually putting in effort. And lately I've been putting in a lot of effort into learning Greek. Five hours a day, really, really just putting the time in. It's, just, it's an intense few week course during the summer. So I'm giving it everything. And I got a reward. Saturn kind of gives you rewards if you're ready to put the energy in. So I use the moon energy because one of my biggest frustrations in Greece is that I can't read websites. It's all in, the, it's all in Greek. So I've never been able to order anything in Greek. And if they haven't got an English translation on the website, I'm buggered. So for the first time, I was able to order a book in Greek writing my address in Greek for the first time. So Saturn, the work, the ethic, the integrity, 
moon, just going with your intuition and finding a way to make something work. That's the energy that you're working with. So we've got a fixed cross, a fixed square. <laughs> okay, so we've got all this water going on, which is creating. Oh, it's a time to be creative. Please get your instruments out. Get whatever it is that you can play. Rent a piano or a keyboard or play something or paint something. I've started to do some uh, little paintings for tiles, maybe in kitchens and uh, little places. Um, uh, I'm also creating with the Pleiadians um, a pack of beautiful cards with messages on in Pleiadian language, they tell me, as well as in our language. So if I can be creative, and I never painted in my life until the Pleiadians came to say hello, if I can do all this, You can. You can do all these things. You too can do it and enjoy and express. Life, let the life come through you. So here's the advantage of this grand square. Okay, so let me show you how it looks astrologically. So we've got the moon in Scorpio, we've got Uranus in Taurus, opposite each other. And then at the other spectrum, we've got Saturn in Aquarius and Mars in Leo. So it looks like this, okay? It looks like a grand cross. Stavros, as they call the cross in Greek. So... We're working with all elements, fire, earth, air, and water. We have Mars in the fire sign, Mars in Leo. So Mars in Leo. It's proud. What are you proud of? What have you done that you feel good about? I feel great that I ordered my book. What do you feel good about? Let's share. What are you proud of? Right here, right now. Let's start. And thank you for liking the video. Lucy is encouraging and so is April. If you would please like the video, it would help more of our soul family to join us. And this is even further. So you've got things inside of you that you've not played with yet, that you've not experimented with yet. What are you proud of? Let's spread the love. Thank you, Carol. Heidi started painting. Yes, Marty, percussion instruments. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Earning your ex prison for stealing money. Proud of being yourself. Wonderful, Beersky. Yay. Proud of your progress on the spiritual journey, Chicken Little. Daniel, being yourself and spreading love. Beautiful. Key goddess, committed to yourself and your journey and establishing healthy boundaries. Beautiful. Thank you for subscribing. Proud of taking, ah, they're, they're coming through really quickly. Awesome, Julia found God in, beautiful. Proud of a good health report, Nancy, awesome. Yes, oh, this is awesome, yes. Building a business at 47, Anchor, yes. Jojo started gardening, yeah, wow, awesome. Yes, yes, yes. 
I got so excited this week when a client of mine to tell me that her album had been a prize and was going to be featured. I did a happy dance. Yes, the happiness for one another because we're not separate. We are one another. So much to be proud of. Awesome. So what's in your imagination? So we've got this, this, this Mars in, in any of us, okay? So the pride, feeling good about yourself, being strong, being straight, being direct, being clear. Saying what you can do and saying what you can't do. I've been doing some painting of the place I'm living in. It's, you know, it's a little tired at the edges, as I said in the last video. Um, and I got 10 liters of paint. It was the cheapest way to buy it. And uh, the, the guy just said to me, that's all right. He said, I'll deliver it to you. No charge. I'll just deliver it to you later in the afternoon. I couldn't, I can't lift it. Yes. Yeah? So know what you have the strength to do and know what you don't have the strength to do. And be honest about it. Leo is honest. There's all honesty there. Opposite this Leo, we've got Saturn in Aquarius. This is now, I feel, referring to, because it's an outer planet, towards the outer planets. And Saturn in Aquarius is all about how we as communities decide we're going to evolve. How we're going to come together. What structures do we need now? What social structure do we need now to be able to create a more equitable world? Not one where the teeny, teeny, less than 1% own most of everything, but one that is more equitable. And how we're going to structure that? And Saturn is asking us really to look at ways in which we're going to do that work. We're being asked to look at our freedom, independence, boundaries. All these things are really important. And there may be some issues around Mars. It can also be egotistical, the ego, and that which is good for the collective. But if you will raise your creativity quotient, you will be contributing to the collective. Raising up, it's about raising up, lifting up, helping up. And then we've got the other opposition, which is Uranus in Taurus, which is this shake up of the financial systems and goodness knows it's coming. I think 2022 will be a very big year when Jupiter and Neptune conjunct in March in Pisces, but we're building to that. Jupiter goes back into Pisces on the 29th of July, resonating with Neptune. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of an oil crisis and that this could really impact everything in our world and especially everything to do with supplies and to do with um, everything to do with how we distribute food and services and things that we need. Hey, Louisa, thank you. You're cleaning out your garage and you're making room, painting, sewing and creating. Awesome. Yay. Way to go. So Uranus is shaking up habit patterns. I'm constantly being shaken up. Yes, the internet's choppy here in the countryside in Greece. There isn't much bandwidth. So when everybody comes, it gets slower and slower and slower and slower. And I wasn't sure if I was going to have to run into Athens to do the live stream this evening. But luckily, I didn't have to disrupt uh, the routine of being able to have this space. But what routines of yours do you need to shake up? What are the things in your life that you know you've got just 
just a little too comfortable that are not good for you. Fine to have certain comforts. Fine to have a nice comfy bed, a good computer, nice food. But where are you in a habit that is not quite serving? Just a question. But yes, trade with the stock market, Jessica. We're going to see some amazing highs. I do think the oil price is going to go through to the moon. So if you are going to be investing, I think oil is going to go up immensely with that Neptune energy. I think it's pure. Neptune rules oil, Neptune in Pisces, certainly oil, and Jupiter magnifying anything to do with oil and the logistics of oil. And of course, you know how much oil plays a huge part in our world. Opposite the Uranus, we've got the moon in Scorpio. What do you need to release and let go of and trust? Scorpio has always got an energy of it wants to hold on, but in the end, it's got to let go and release and be reborn and transform. You can be transformed. And every day you can set intentions here in your body. I, I do my best to do this every way, every day, to do my best to be just a little bit better today than I was yesterday. Just go the extra mile. Just do the extra thing. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you, Lucy, you're doing a terrific job here, as always. So the fixed energy is going to give you the framework. Yeah, I always think of the fixed signs as giving you a framework in which to work and to be productive. So what are the things you really want to accomplish? What are the things that you're dreaming of, the dream? And what, are the, and what are you willing to put in the energy in order to accomplish it? That's the question here. So we've got Saturn trying to Mercury, which is brilliant right now for writing, for communications. Uh, it's a really great aspect, especially from tomorrow uh, when uh, Mercury will go direct. So things moving forward. Okay, Jillian starting a decluttering business. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So in the spirit of creativity, I'm wanting to share with you because it, it's always important to make you give you something new, something different. And I just want to give you this lovely quote from Roald Dahl. A person who has good thoughts can never be ugly. You can have a wonky nose, a crooked mouth, a double chin, and sticky out teeth. But if you've got good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. So, let me now please share with you something new, which I feel is so pertinent to this solstice. This solstice is about fantasies, dreams, water, love, romance. playfulness and bringing up your creativity. So think of the dream that you have for yourself and the dream that you have for humanity, for our family as a whole. I want that every one of us, all of us together, can come to a loving place where every single person 
because I do believe and feel in my heart inside a single person of inside everyone. So I was reminded of a poem by Edward Lear called The Owl and the Pussycat. Now I'm aware for those of you in America that a pussy is very different than what we have as the word pussy in the UK. So please forgive it, but really um, it's just normal in the UK that it's a cat. Okay, so these are two night creatures, the owl in Greek, the kukuvaya, and the pussycat, the owl and the pussycat, the night creatures are. It's the time of the moon energy. So let me share with you this beautiful poem. The owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. The owl looked up at the stars at night and sang to a small guitar. Oh, lovely pussy. Oh, pussy, my love. What a beautiful pussy you are, you are. What a beautiful pussy you are. Pussy said to the owl, you amazing fowl, how elegantly you Oh, let's get married. Too long we have tarried. But what shall we do for a ring? They sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bong tree grows. And there in a wood, a piggywig stood with a ring at the end of his nose, his nose, with a ring at the end of his nose. Dear pig, would you be willing to sell for one shilling your ring? Said the piggy, I will. So they went away and married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. And they dined on mints and slices of quince, which were they ate with a runcible spoon. And hand in hand, at the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon, the moon. They danced by the light of the moon. And I share this just to get your imaginative juices going at this time. Every one of you has got creativity in you, everyone. And the creativity is sparkled by the energies at this solstice. So who are you? Are you the owl? Are you the kukuvaya? Are you the kitty or the pussy as we would say in England? The rata, ratakia. Maybe you're the pig, the piggy, the horny, with the pigger to the end of his nose. Who are you? And what are you dreaming of? Because this is where a time with Neptune and Venus together is a time for appreciating beauty appreciating the beauty inside every single person. And it's not easy. Oh my goodness, it's not easy. <laughs> For sure. 
And that's why we can practice here online with one another. Practice with one another. Kanumi praktiki mazi. Let's practice together finding the good, making this a home, the cancer solstice, a home for us, for the Pleiadians, for the beings, the astral beings, all the elves and the gnomes and the elementals and all the unseen, because water is very much about the unseen. All these unseen beings, let's welcome them. Let's bring them in. And it might sound crazy. And there's so much nonsense. It's great, you know, an owl and a pussycat going off to sea in a boat. What could be sillier? Thank you, Edward Lear. Allow yourself to be a little silly. Allow yourself to be childlike. Allow yourself to do some of the things that you love to do when you were little. So I just want to thank Lucy, April, for being terrific moderators today. I want to wish you an amazing solstice. Trust your intuition. Trust your gut. Bring out your creativity, your romance. Sometimes when I pass people uh, as I'm walking in the street here, I just look at the sky and I look and I say to people in Greek, it's paradise here. We do have paradise here on earth. I just need to become a little more aware of it sometimes. So I hope that you feel uplifted. I hope that you feel inspired. Kukuvaya, Ratakia, Uruni. All the teddies, much, much love to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you for all of you who have been giving and contributing on Patreon and so many places. I really appreciate you. Thank you.